Hello and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be making this UV box for cyanotype printing. So why am I making this box? Basically it's because cyanotype prints are exposed by UV light so this box produces it and directs it onto the prints and hopefully it'll do it a lot faster than just sandwiching it between a couple of sheets of acrylic and putting it in a window. The first step of the project is to build all the electronics and write the code to control them so I'll do that real quick. Here is the final version of the circuitry for the UV box. So what happens is 12 volts comes in here. It gets stepped down to nine volts, which goes to here. And the reason for the step down is that the 12 volts coming in here is slightly too high for this Arduino to process. It's rated up to 12 volts, but I took a voltmeter and this is actually like 12.15. So step it down to nine goes to this distribution block, which sends it to the Arduino and sends it to the contact side of this relay. Going through the Arduino side of the circuit, this basically is controlled by the rotary encoder, which takes the inputs and the seven segment display, allows me to sh see exactly what I'm doing. And then when I trigger it, it goes to this relay. This relay gets triggered, it dumps the nine volts from this through this distribution block into these UV panels, which then turn on the UV LEDs. Given the circuit a test to show you how it works. So plugging it in, turns on, and then it goes into, this is just a standby loop. So it does, it's just cycles through this while it waits for an input. So I press and hold down on this. And now X is displayed. And then I can select the one, the two, the three. These are just different preset settings for the amount of time I want it to turn on for. And when I press again, the UVs come on for a preset amount of time. So that's how the circuit works. It's ready to go on the box. Now that the circuit's complete, I'm going to need a box to house everything. So I prepped all this and now I'm going to assemble it. Next step is to add the feet to the box. So, do that now. And for the top, I absolutely did not trust myself to put this back together again. It's got all these weird joints and things, so I just sanded, stained it all in one chunk and now I just gotta put all the screws back in. So the whole idea behind this is I put my negative down, I put my clear sheet of acrylic on top of it. Next, the top goes on to hold it all down in a nice sandwich. And the clasps are clasped, locking it all in place. And then I can turn the UV circuit on and it'll UV everything inside that box. And here is the final version of the top. You can see I put all the electronics on it and wired them all up and I've got inside all of the LED panels. So I'm gonna plug it in and give it a test. Now, okay, here's the test, plug it in and 
the cycle appears to be working, so. And I will pick two minutes and on. Everything up top seems to be working, so moment of truth. And there we go. All of the LED panels are working too. So now I just got to test it with uh, the cyanotype printing and see how it does. Something else I figured I should try is to see how much light is leaking out of the box. So I'm gonna plug it in, turn it on and turn the lights off. See how much comes out. So it looks like kind of see it briefly there there's a little bit leaking out of the sides here it's really hard to catch on camera those sides seem good back side Oop. I, guess I should get them out so here I don't see anything leaking out so oh there's a little bit back there I'm catching on the camera but I mean overall it's keeping 90% of the light in the box, so I call that a win. One other small addition that I made is uh, I put on these foam adhesive strips, so you can see them there. Right around the edge here. Time to give it a test. I've still got the negative from the last time I did cyanotype printing, so I'm gonna use that and I've made up some paper and I'm gonna put it in the box and see how long it takes to expose it. Guess you couldn't really tell but I'm gonna start with five minutes just to see what that does and we'll see what the paper looks like when it comes out so I kind of forgot I changed the settings five is 25 minutes but I mean that's still pretty good I'm gonna give it the full 25 minutes and if it comes out super exposed then that's good I'll put it in for less time well I'll put the next one in for less time I'll catch it from this side so you can see it it does say end once it's completed its cycle and the light's off. So I'm gonna put the camera back on the mount and we'll see what's inside this thing. Okay, has it exposed the print? So reset it just to end it. And I'm gonna unplug it just cause I don't want it plugged in while I'm doing this. And Oh, cool! So it is fully exposed. You can see it's exposed in there. The outside where it's not exposed is the bit that's underneath the box. You can even see the little the little ticks where the the box wasn't completely perfect and some light could leak out. But I would say this is way overexposed. But I guess we'll see. Is it? Ooh. The acrylic feels a little bit hot, but I mean, it is UV light. <laughs> I think that's going to end up being way overexposed, which actually that's good though, because 25 minutes is longer than I'd want it. So if I end up having to go like 10 minutes per, then that'd be perfect. Okay. I'm going to give it the water and peroxide treatment. So one thing I am kind of curious about is there's, it looks like you can kind of see them. There's strip lines and bubble i don't know what's causing that and i don't know if it's going to mess up the print i figured out what's going on here basically that pattern of splotches lines up exactly with the uv panels inside the box so it's just that directly underneath them the image gets a little bit more exposed and then a couple of centimeters out it gets less exposed the way to solve this is with a light diffuser which is not part of this video but i am definitely going to add it as a future upgrade now put it in the peroxide and we'll get the final form and then neutralizing that <laughs> that is way overexposed so attempt number one 25 minute interval there it is i'll move on to the rest of the attempts, steadily reducing the time interval, and I'll show you what those look like. So, I'm gonna do one, which is five minutes this time. Let's see what uh, 
the image on the inside of the box looks like. And wow, that, I mean, it looks exposed. We'll see how exposed it really is, but if the spots weren't there, I think that would be pretty much perfect. So I might have to address what's uh, going on with those spots there. This time I'm gonna try giving 10 minutes ago and see if is 10 minutes better or is 10 minutes worse or, you know, will it work? 10 minutes complete. So what's this gonna look like? How hot is this? Eh, not too bad. That seems quite a bit more well done but overexposure can be good. So let's see what that turned out like. Yeah, that one's much better except for the spots. Much, much better. Here are the results of my UV box project. In the end, I learned a ton making this thing, both with the electronics and with just making the box itself. And it does need a diffuser, but other than that, I think it turned out great. You can see by all of the electronics modules and old 3D print bits that I went through a few iterations for sure, but it was worth it. There are some off-grade kind of ones up there, but in the end, a little bit of splotch fixed that with a diffuser, but you can still see the picture of the marmot, so I think this turned out great. I'm going to call that a win. I really enjoyed making this thing, and I'll see you guys in the next video.